Hey everybody, so it's evening here in southern countryside Italy and if you hear some noises it's because there's a lot of tractors driving past. Literally tractors, proper farm area I'm in. Anyhow, lovely, beautiful. But, alright, I want to crack on with analysing some of these traders so I can allocate those funds that I now have unallocated because Barrow's leaving and, you know, just to see what I want to do with all of them. The top suggestion by far is this guy, trading 0207 Arnold Parachute. Now, one of the comments that I get a lot uh, from on the last video, one of the, the top comments was, yay, at last you're going to start taking a bit more risk. You're going to start copying some riskier guys. It seems that people really want me to copy some riskier people. Now, I used to copy risky people. I used to copy a lot of them. It's just that they all made a lot of money and then they'd just lose it. So that's why I kind of stopped, you know. Um, but, I, so I'll see where I'm going to go. But at the moment, I'm still looking for the low risk people. I'm not going to suddenly switch it up. But a lot of people seem to think I should do that, you know. Everyone's into higher risk. But... And this guy here, um, he's all right. So he's Arno Perishu from Spain. Current risk score is three. It was higher in the past. Um, so what he talks about here is that uh, starting from observation, interest rates are falling steadily. And in traditional savings, it is increasingly interesting to invest in the stock market to make money work smartly and increase the return on savings that have stagnated for years. Years. All right, he, he sort of said it twice. I think what he's saying there is interest rates are falling, banks have lowered their interest rates, um, people can't get as much from savings. In some parts of the world it's gone into negative interest rates, banks are actually taking some of your savings. This is quite a situation, so what he's saying is because of that it's a good time to invest and in all the rest of it. There are, there are arguments for and against that one. Um, then he goes on about uh, a bit about how he's going to help you and he's going to maximize your profits. And then generally two trades are open per week with good stop loss and take profit management. The detention time, which I think is just the waiting time, the length of the trade, can be vary from two to five days. So two to five days per trade, about two trades per week is what he's saying. And then there's a little bit of his advert at the end, save you time, optimize your wallet. Now I've looked over on his feed and he is replying to people. He does seem to be replying. Um, some people seem to be asking about whether the lower risk management is why the last five months are mainly on a comfortable plus five average. So um, I think maybe they were used to his stats being much higher than plus five percent per month before. And now they're wondering, whoa, whoa, why has it gone down to plus five percent? I'm not sure if that's what he's saying, but it looks like that, you know, and sort of is the risk management, you know, responsible for this. And now major hedge, fund, hedge funds, best hedge funds in the world are returning like 18%, you know, that's a great return per year. So to be doing 5% per month is massive, massive. I have adjusted this since I started, you know, I now realize um, how much risk comes with the rewards people were hoping for and wanting. And I'm not after that at all. But there we are. So people are commenting on that. Um, and his, his, uh, his, response seems to be that he does seem to be lowering his risk, uh, increasing his risk management, lowering sort of the risk and volatility once. We'll see it in his, in his portfolio, in his statistics. Um, here he's, uh, he just talks, he does talk to people quite a lot. I think some of his copiers want him to keep taking the high risk and they talk about um, big position sizes and that he's not gonna, he's, and he's talking about how his position sizes will stay the same and he said in one of his comments that sometimes he'll decrease, decrease them if he thinks, if he's uncertain about a trade. So I'm not sure if he's actually using big uh, position sizes in each of his trades. People seem to like that. I get a lot of comments about traders, why is, I've put, you know, $500 with this guy and he's only using $100 of my money. What's wrong with him? And they don't really get the, um, those ideas of not allocating all of your capital on open trades, you know? So you don't put all the eggs in, in one basket. In fact, you put very few of them in one basket. And very often traders will only say uh, trade with a small amount of the money they have overall. You know, it's part of their risk management, part of not losing all the money. And especially new people seem to hate that and say, I, if I copy you with 500, I want 500 used. And um, no. You know, no. But So I'm not sure if that guy's doing this, using large parts of his capital per trade. And I can't see because he hasn't got any open trades. But it seems to be something that people are asking him about as well. So we'll see. Anyhow, he is replying. Uh, I'm going to go over to his stats. Look at this. Massive. These are huge gains. 20.68% in January. 36% in February. 26% in March. 12% in April. And remember that guy was talking about how is your risk management the, the reason why we've only got 5% over the last five months? So that would be one, two, three, four, five. So here, from here on, you know, the, the, the returns are still enormous as monthly returns, you know, if you're going to keep your risk low. 
Now, you can have very high risk and have these returns. You know, it may just be lucky or it may be very skilled. But to have low risk and have these returns is extremely difficult. But it's definitely gone down. We can only see from December of last year where he made 60.45%. That's got to be enormous risk he was taking. But he's got all green months, all right? All green months. Is that complete skill and this guy's really talented and skilled? Or is it a bit of luck as well? I don't know. In the past, I've copied people who have all green and then and they've had high risk scores and then boom, they sort of suddenly lose it. Now, if you suddenly go down 50% uh, here, Let's say, imagine, you suddenly lose 50%. It's not like you can say, all right, well, he's made 20 and 36. So that's 20 and 36. That's 50%. So if he lost it, we've still got all of these months. It doesn't work like that. It compounds. If you suddenly now lose 50% here, you lose 50% of all these gains will suddenly be lost if it goes down a large percent. So as it accumulates... The more money you have, if you lose 50%, you lose 50% of everything that you've made so far and had before. People maybe don't understand. I didn't understand how that worked. So a swing down after big gains will mean you lose 50% of all of those gains and all the money that was there. So I think, all right, So, but so far it's all green and that's amazing. Um, look, average risk. So in December of last year, his max risk went up to 10. 10. So 60.45, 10. Ten, it's huge risk, okay? Average 8, max 10. Uh, January of this year, average 8, max 10. February 7, average 8, max 8. Average 7, max 8. He couldn't have been copied here. As a popular investor, you can't go above 6. You can't go above 6 if you're a popular investor, if you're on the popular investor program. If you have the blue star, yellow star, red star, green star. No! If you want to get onto the program, blue star, you can't have above 6. So, he's obviously brought that down here. So, I'm not sure when he became a PI. I'm imagining here, because here it was still 6, so I'm imagining around here is when he's become a PI, and he's probably increased his risk management to join the Popular Investor Program, because he can't be doing this stuff, you know, it's too risky. So, that's where we are, huge risk scores, but he has brought them down. Is he going to keep them low? I don't know, how can I tell? I don't know, I'd have to talk to him and ask, but he, people's in the comments, in the comments people do seem to have noticed that he's really doing stuff which is making less rewards and bringing his risk down. So his daily drawdown, biggest is 17.41 in a day. Uh, weekly, 17.41, and yearly, 17.41, exactly the same figure. So it, the biggest amount he ever lost, he did lose in one day, all right? So um, a drawdown, then it may have gone back up, but it was a drawdown. He's got 661 copies, 196 copies in the last seven days. A lot of people talking about this guy and suggesting that I copy him. Um, now, 102 trades, 300,000 to 1 million assets under management. He's got a lot of money copying him already. 102 trades, mostly currencies, then indices, and a little bit of commodities. It's a nice mix. Another currency, guys, but some indices and commodities as well. 79.41% profitable. His average profit is a tiny bit lower than his average loss, which is actually it's doing quite well, but they're big either way. You see, it's not like 1%, 1.1%. It's 13.44 and 14.09. So he's looking for bigger wins and he'll take bigger losses uh, in exchange for those bigger wins. He's risking more than the people I'm currently copying. But he's winning overall. So uh, 18, 19 trades on the NASDAQ, 73% profitable. Average profit, 18.45%. Average loss, 10.76. You see, you see it's bigger. The average profit and the average loss is bigger than someone, for instance, who's, losing, who's using very low looking for very very low risk you know um but it's mostly profitable here euro us dollar 12 trades uh, 58 percent profitable average profit is higher than the average loss yet again which is a good sign on these two the average profit is higher than the average loss it's a, it's a good sign uh 10.3 profit 9.83 uh, loss, but mostly just profitable. And on 10 trades on the US dollar against Canadian dollar, the one which Barrow got into trouble with there um, last month, 90% profitable, mostly profitable, but look at the, the profit is 13.71. The average loss is 52.97. So not just Barrow who's been, been finding, no, his was USD AUD. Sorry, it wasn't the same one Barrow was trading. But there we are, bigger losses, much bigger loss there than there. And that's a significant loss, 52.97% average loss. Which means if he's made multiple trades which have lost, then some would have been bigger than that and some smaller and have averaged it at 52. I'm not sure. But there we are. Um, 2.37 trades per week. That's kind of what he said. 4.5 days holding time, roughly what he said. Active since the 12th, since 10th of December 2018. So we can see it from his statistics. And 81% profitable weeks. So doing quite well there. 
overall. So really great statistics. But you see those massive gains here, these huge gains are going with this huge risk. You see what I mean? Now he's had to bring that down to start to get onto the popular investor program and we can see his risk going down here. I don't know if that's his plan for the future. In his portfolio, he's got there's nothing open. Uh, in his history, let's go. We're looking at the last 30 days. Uh, we see the individual trades. So sell Canadian dollar, Japanese yen. So forex, forex, indice, forex, 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 mostly forex. Opening and close times sort of tallies up with the, the amount of days he says he'll leave it open. Kind of big wins, lots of wins. So 30 days, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11 trades in the last 30 days. So he's, he's opening these sort of bigger trades uh, and I, I can't tell the unit size. I can't tell mu how much of his account size he's used on each trade because I can only see that when there's one open. You can also, by the way, click here, this little button, and it'll show you overall three trades on eight. It'll show you 100% profitable on all of the instruments. He hasn't made a loss in the last 30 days. It's quite magnificent. And if you click into it, then it goes into this view which shows what they are. Um, He's not always buying, so he's buys and sells. These are all sells, the other ones were buys. So he's mixing it up between buys and sells. But it doesn't seem to be buys and sells in the same instrument. He doesn't seem to be using counter trades and those hedging strategies. But that seems to be good. If we go back for three months um, and we look at this, look, he's really mostly profitable. He's not at all profitable on the German 30. Uh, three quarters profitable on the USD CAD, but most of it is 100% profitable. 75% on Euro USD, 100% on gold, but only one trade. Four trades on Euro, US dollar, it's just 75%. But really profitable on a lot of other things. He seems to be picking them well so far. All right, so 91.18% uh, profitable, 16.16% in closed trades in the last three months. It's a lot. All right, we go over to the chart. Let's look for drawdowns. He, this is an amazing chart, really. Look, he's just, <laughs> it's just going up. It's just going up. So if I'd have copied him with 10,000 a year ago, I'd now have 53,000, apparently. Good Lord! So, with potential big risks come potential big rewards, but also those potential big risks. So it's up to each person to say how much they're willing to risk their money uh, in search for the big profits. I don't know. Uh, so at this point, I mean, that's really quite amazing though. He's done very well. That's the 200 moving average and the 200 exponential moving average. That's really, that's good. Uh, that's, a, that's a lovely chart. So what would you do? I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it back to you. I'm thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it. I'm going to analyze a whole bunch of people, but he's looking, he's been doing incredibly well. His risk scores are obviously very, very high compared to what I'm normally copying. And I'll weigh that up and maybe I'll copy him with 10% of my portfolio or something. I'll have a look at the others first and I'll weigh up. But, um, you know, who I'm going to copy. A lot of people have been asking about him though. So I'm going to put the poll up here. Uh, would you copy this guy? Most people said yes to big profits, the last guy. I'll go over those numbers in a future video exactly how many said yes, but most people said yes to big profits. With this guy, trading 0207, Arnaud Perichu from Spain, would you copy this guy? Yes, no, or add him to a watch list? All right, so those are the three options. Please do vote because it will give future people who watch this video a chance to see what you all think and what the, the wisdom of the crowd, social trading wisdom says. You know, they'll get a, a, an idea of what people are thinking. Plus, I'd like to see what you all think as well. That's it for now. I'm going to go over another one. He's looking good. I'm going to go over some more and as quickly as possible because I do want to allocate this money, get it working for me. Uh, so that's it from now, from, from the nice evening in the countryside in Italy. Hope you're all very well and see you.